All right, this is the demo for Monu. Uh, it has a much longer name, but uh, I'm not going to bother saying that. I'll just put it in the description. Uh, it is quite long. The demo just came out yesterday as a recording. Uh, it's a uh, dungeon crawler RPG similar to Etrian Odyssey. The demo just contains up to the first floor boss, apparently. I haven't actually gotten that far yet. So you can see the movement is the same as Etrian Odyssey. Uh, you move around on the grid uh, and you've got the map and so on. You start without the map and once you beat the mid boss for the floor, uh, you unlock it. Uh, so these are some of the enemies. Uh, there's no random encounters. Uh, all the enemies are just moving around on the map like this. Uh, the color indicates uh, different things about the enemy. The orange ones are stationary. Uh, the green ones move about randomly and they are just normal enemies they're not like uh, foes like in etrian odyssey the map seems to be the same every time uh, it's not randomly generated or anything uh, i don't know if there will be other randomly generated dungeons or anything in the full game And this is a battle. Uh, you can see you've got your different options there for attack, defend, uh, skill, item, and run. The green goblins are the weaker ones, so I'm targeting them first just to get rid of them. The menu that pops up after you've selected everyone's action uh, lets you choose to either uh, watch all the actions play out and see their animations and uh, you know the actual details of who did how much damage to who and so on. Uh, it also gives you the option to just skip through all that uh, and pretty much instantly play out the attack. You can also select that by pressing X, uh, which makes it uh, pretty quick to uh, go through the battle. There's also the other menu uh, where if you press X while you're still selecting characters' attacks, uh, it will give you the option to just uh, select the same actions that everybody took last turn or have just everybody attack. And then you can press X again there to skip the animations. Uh, so it's quite easy to just uh, keep pressing, uh, you know, everybody do the same attack as last time and then skip all the animations. And then the battles go through very quickly. After the battle you get uh, experience, gold, and items. And just after this battle was where the mini boss was. Uh, we can see here uh, the map only actually fills in squares that you've been to so you can see as i walk around it fills in some more of these squares uh, and the door here uh, i'm not sure exactly what that glowing thing was so i'm just going to avoid it for now uh, these purple enemies here these are more kind of like the foes from etrian odyssey uh, they aren't exactly like super strong mid-boss types, they're still normal enemies, but they are stronger than normal, and there's quite a few of them, uh, so uh, it is a good idea to avoid them unless you really want the fight. Uh, they do chase you around uh, until you leave the room. The blue enemies uh, flee from you, uh, so you've got to chase them down into a corner. Uh, it seems they're typically kind of optional, high experience, high gold, yielding enemies, so it's a good idea to try and chase them down if you can. And you'll see here, after the battle, I get quite a bit more experience and some items. So this is just some hints for where to go. 
Uh, next we've got a blue enemy with horns. Uh, the mini bosses all have horns on them, and so this is a fleeing mini boss. I've got to uh, chase him down and corner him, uh, but then you see here these purple enemies uh, come out and ambush me. Uh, before I did manage to avoid them and uh, corner the mini boss, uh, but this time I ended up hitting the purple enemy. Uh, and these purple enemies are quite strong. Uh, there's a large number of powerful enemies. I do manage to beat them though. Unlike Etrian Odyssey, it seems like the enemies do not move around the map while you're already in combat. Uh, because even after beating this purple one, the other purple enemy was still there. Uh, he didn't move in and join the fight, which was nice. So I did manage to beat them here, uh, I was expecting to be killed. Uh, anyways, I, you can see I gained some uh, skill points and uh, level. Uh, so the skill points don't seem to track exactly with your levels. Uh, sometimes you gain skill points and not levels, and other times you gain a level but no skill points. Uh, they don't run on the same meter or anything. Uh, but they do tend to be more or less the same. I found that usually for about every time you gain a level, sometime before the next level, you'll gain a skill point. Uh, and here I've cornered the mini boss and have started to fight him. Uh, I also wasn't expecting to beat him because he has uh, killed me before, but uh, I managed to do it. Although soon after I ended up getting uh, wiped out by the other purple enemy that was following behind me. But that's okay, actually. Uh, unlike Etrian Odyssey and most other uh, dungeon exploring games, uh, getting wiped out isn't actually that bad. Uh, you don't lose any money or items or experience or anything. You keep everything you get. And you actually get your HP and MP maximums permanently boosted. Also, any experience you gained uh, past your current level cap uh, it gets converted into gold. I'm not exactly sure how the level cap works, if it's just for the sake of the demo, or if in the actual game there will be, like, you can only get up to such a level, depending on how far you are in the tower or something.
Uh, so here we're back at the main hub. Uh, here our options are uh, going to the guild, uh, going to see the queen, or heading into the tower. In the guild, uh, you can uh, buy or sell items, uh, create new characters, and change existing ones, uh, and speak to the uh, barkeeper or whatever. Uh, so this is the menu for buying items. Uh, you can see the price is up in the top right. Uh, I found that a little bit annoying that it's not next to the item itself, so you've got to keep uh, looking back and forth. Uh, also on the right there, there's uh, three pages of stats that you click through by uh, using the Y button. Again, having all the stats spread over three pages uh, makes it a little bit annoying to try and see exactly uh, you know what's going on with the item. There's also no uh, try on feature. You can't see what a character's stats would be like if you uh, equip the new item. Uh, you've got to just buy it or take notes or whatever. You can't just uh, see how it would change, which is kind of annoying. Uh, you can also sell your items. Uh, most of the items seem to sell for a very small amount, like three gold for a sword that costs like a hundred to buy. Uh, so you'll get most of your gold from killing enemies, I think. Uh, so next is the character creator spot. Uh, you can have up to five characters in your party, uh, although you can make many more for free at any time. And then uh, in this place, you can change around your party. Uh, I only made five just to start. And here you can see uh, you can change the character's sprite. Uh, that is only the character's sprite. It doesn't have any effect on their stats, so you can freely mix and match uh, the actual class with what they look like. Uh, there's also two different colors available for each. I don't know if the full game will have more, or if you'll unlock more during the game or whatever. Uh, and you can set their name up at the top, and you can press X to give it a random name if you don't really care. After setting their name and everything, uh, you can choose their class. As far as the actual classes, uh, there is a warrior, knight, a martial artist, magic user, monk, gun user, samurai, and ninja. When you're making the character, you get a fairly large number of points to put into your character stats to customize them. Uh, the stats are uh, strength, intelligence, spirit, uh, constitution, speed, and luck. Uh, we can also go in here to see the character's stats, uh, as well as change their equipment. When you level up in the dungeon, it doesn't actually apply immediately. Once you leave the dungeon uh, in this screen, you have to hit Y, and then uh, you get to do the level. Uh, you get one stat point to put into one of the stats. Uh, so these are the five characters I made. Uh, there's Ashley the Knight, uh, Shampoo the Martial Artist, uh, Lumiza the Ninja, Zelda the Monk, and Deneb the Magic User. Uh, you can see with Zelda, she's got the uh, sprite for the female hero, uh, but she is the Monk class, which is like a white mage basically. I thought that fit a bit better, but uh, it just shows you can freely mix and match sprites and classes. Uh, to create whatever character you want. Uh, and this is the window for learning skills. Uh, as you gain your skill points, you can spend them here to unlock and upgrade skills. Uh, kind of hidden in that text in the bottom left uh, quarter of the screen, uh, it shows what level you have to be in order to uh, unlock the skill. Uh, that took me a little while to notice. 
I do really prefer Etrian Odyssey's kind of, uh, I think it had like a tree layout that showed all your skills and uh, what, what was the prerequisites and what levels they were and everything. Uh, I thought it was just a lot easier than this to uh, make out what was going on. Uh, and here's the menu for equipping items. Uh, one important thing to note with the items, uh, they've each got a experience bar that fills up as, as you use them. Uh, even like the weapons, the shields, armor, accessory, all of them do. Uh, once the bar fills up, they gain a plus. And they can level up a number of times until they reach their max rank. So the more rare items has a higher rank. As they level up, they get stronger. And you can have different items of the same type be different ranks, so uh, you can find like a better version that you can level up farther. Uh, so that seems to be it for the demo. Uh, of course, I haven't actually beat the first uh, floor of the dungeon yet, so there may be some other mechanics that unlock uh, once you do. Uh, the demo is available on the Japanese eShop, and the full game releases July 15th in Japan. Uh, I don't know of any uh, planned Western release yet, but there isn't a ton of text or anything, and the systems don't seem to be that complicated. Uh, so even if you don't speak Japanese, you could probably buy it and uh, play through it anyways. Uh, I think I probably will be getting it. Uh, as it is, it does seem pretty fun. Uh, I do kind of hope there's a little bit more meat to it once you get uh, out of the demo. Uh, maybe like some quests or some, you know, randomly generated side dungeons or something. Uh, and maybe something like, I don't know, some more skills. Uh, the different classes, they don't seem to have that many skills each. You know, they've each got like seven or eight. But uh, even if the demo is representative of everything that is going to be in the game, uh, I think it probably will be worth it. <laughs>